Hey, in today's video, we're going to cover Fullstack AI and Kira Masse and understand the code behind them to learn how we could have built them ourselves. Fullstack AI is an AI CLI that can generate a Fullstack Next.js app. It will generate over a hundred files of code using just a simple prompt like this. And Kira Masse is a tool that can help do the same thing, but manually, and you have to enter a few more commands to do it. Fullstack AI was built on Kira Masse, So I'm going to teach you about both of them. I'm the creator of Fullstack AI and Kira Masse is created by a guy called Nico. Before we dive into the video, I want to mention a project I've been working Working on. It's called Inbox Zero. It's an email app. It's also open source. It helps you get to Inbox Zero fast, clean up your newsletter subscriptions, understand your inbox via analytics, and also an AI assistant to automate parts of your email for you. It would mean a lot to me if you could star it on GitHub. I'm looking to get to 200 stars. We're edging closer. And also I'm going to be launching this on Product Hunt this week. So I'm going to stick the link to the description below. It's going to be a few days after the video comes out. But if you're watching it, uh, it would mean a lot for me if you could give your support once it does go live on Product Hunt. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, of course, and give it a like. So let's dive into things. First Stack AI is an AI CLI that allows you to build a first stack app from an AI prompt. So let's show you how that's done. I'm going to go here to my terminal and I'm going to type in the command. I'm going to build a Twitter clone called Stack prompt and it's going to have github login and it's going to have stripe for payments this app is already going the ai is generating it you can see our next js project has been built here and we're continuing to add files to it here you can see the ai has now gone and built our account user settings and an option to update our email and so on here we've added resend we're adding billing now as well via stripe you can see some of the code that's being built now we've created a page for prompts so let me show you now what that looks like i've gone and set the environment variables for the project and I've gone and run pmpm PM dev to get it running at localhost 3000. And here you can see I've got a sign in screen. So let's quickly sign in with GitHub. Here I have my account. I have sign out functionality. Here you can see some of the prompts that I can go and enter. Hey, and so on. And now I've added a new prompt to the database. This is all fully functioning. I didn't make any changes. This was all fully AI generated. Here you can see I've entered my email, my name. This all updates the database. We even have billing set up and you can subscribe via Stripe. So everything just works. I hope you enjoyed that. And um, that was all done with one line. Um, and yeah, it's magical what you can do today with AI. So let's take a look at how Fullstack AI was built. If we take a look at the dependencies, you'll see I'm using Commander JS. I'm using OpenAI. I'm using Exec A. These are the main packages that I'm using for this project. By the way, right now I'm on the dev branch. By the time you're watching it, it might be merged into the main branch. But let's take a look. You can see I have a source folder here with the entire project. It only has four files in it and one is just for types. And then we have the website here and this is a mini Next.js landing page, but I'm not going to go into that right now. This is how you use Commander. You just give it the command. So it's going to be gen and then the prompt we're running and here's the description of it. And it's just going to go and call a function and that's it. And then I also export this function so that it could be used by an app that isn't a CLI. If I take a look at the generate code function. So this is now in the AI file. You can see I'm telling you to set an open API key here. You can see I'm using GPT-4 preview. This is the prompt I'm giving it basically that you're going to go build an app and you can see that's it. So this whole file is 40 lines of code. So what's going on It's because I'm using function calling and this is where most of the clever stuff is happening. This is where most of the prompt is. So that I get from get actions and what get actions does is returns three different actions that the AI can call. One is creating the Next.js app. One is initializing Kiramase. And the third one is the Kiramase generate command. And that's to add things like models and API routes. If we look at each one of these, the uh, create next app one should be pretty simple. I give a name to the function. I give a description to it. And I also pass that the function, that the arguments that OpenAI pass me is in the right format. So for that, I'm using Zod. And here you can see the parameters are passed in. So Zod create next app, this one, which is the Zod object that can go and pass it. And even the schema description, it's all coming from the same place. So let me take a look here. This is the types file. You can see that for create next app, I'm taking one thing in and all, the only argument I'm accepting right now is the name of the application. I'm also creating a TypeScript type from it. This is done using z.infer. And then the last part I'm doing is using Zod to JSON schema. And what this does is it takes this Zobbed object and it turns it into a JSON schema. And here's another example with Zod in it. I'm allowing a lot more options. These are different, all the different options I'm passing in. And every time I'm passing in a description, and this is because it's going to be used by JSON schema and this is passed over to the AI. And you can see the same thing for Zod generate every single time. Let's say we want to have a table 
with, that we're generating. So here's the name of the database table should be in snake case and plural. So this is all part of the AI. So it knows how to call this function correctly. So if I jump back to actions quickly, you'll see here is the TypeScript type. Here are the arguments that are being passed in. Here is the passing of the object to make sure the AI has passed it to us in the right format. And here are the parameters. Typically what this would look like is something like this. Here I've got the parameters and I have an object type and I have properties, app name and so on of type string. And here I have the description of what this parameter is. But instead of having to do all of that, most of this data, like the, it's, the app name is of type string, I can actually get from the Zod object. So that's why I added describe in just to add the description, something I typically wouldn't do when I'm using Zod, but so that Zod, Zod to JSON schema can properly work and send all the data it needs to OpenAI. So that's why I do use dot, dot describe. So instead of having to type all that out every time and for the other objects there are many parameters, so it, it definitely saves some time and you don't have to duplicate code. And it's the same idea with Kieran. Massey in it and the same idea with Kira Massey generate. So really the bulk of the logic is just in this file types. I do some transforms in the type so just to make sure the AI isn't screwing up. Here you can see when I'm calling create next app, this is how it works. So first I'm going to get the app name from the args. I'm going to make sure it's lowercase. Otherwise this is going to fail. And here you can see I'm running the MPX command and this is using exec a calling another CLI from my CLI. And that's how you create an XJS app using a Node.js code. And here again, Kira Masse in it, same idea. I actually went and forked Kira Masse because it didn't have all the options that I wanted for running it through via the command line. But you can see again, I'm just using an MPX script and I'm saying I want to create it with this ORM, with this database, with Prisma, with Postgres and so on. I want GitHub or Google authentication and I want it to run in our current folder. And yeah, that's how it works. And the same thing with generate, just calling a different command we're calling generate. So now that we understand how full stack AI was built, we're going to learn about Kira Masse, which is actually a core piece to full stack AI. Now Kira Masse, it's a CLI that helps you build a full stack app similar to what Fullstack AI does, but instead of the AI doing the tasks, you do it yourself via the CLI. So this is a really useful tool to use. Here you can see a video of it. I'm going to play for you in a minute, but basically to get started with it, just install Kiramase globally, then run Kiramase in it. And after that, once you want to add more to the project, you can use Kiramase generate and that allows you to add models, API routes, and so on. So let's play the video to see how it works. You can now go from a blank Next.js project to a full stack application that's ready to accept subscription payments in a matter of seconds. I'm going to run Kiramase in it to, uh, install and configure the packages that we want here. So I am using source folder. I'm using bun today. I'm going to use Shetsian UI as my component library. I'm going to install a few uh, essential components here. I'm going to use Prisma with SQLite. I don't want any example model today. I'm going to use Clerk for authentication. And then I'm going to install TRPC and Stripe. We'll be prompted to sign in. So I'll continue with Google here. Sign in. And there we go. We've got our session here. And you can see we've got the account and billing page set up right away. If we head into the billing page, we've got three plans here. So let's run Kiramase Generate. Um, and we're going to generate the model, the TRPC route, and the views and components. So we're going to call it tweets. Uh, every tweet is going to have content, which is required, um, but we don't want any other fields. We don't want to set up an index, but we do want this model to belong to the user. And we now head over to a new route, which has been scaffolded up called tweets. We should see a new interface here. As you can see, no tweets. If we hit new tweet, hello world, uh, that should be added. No problem. You can see how quickly it is to build applications this way. So now let's take a look into how Kiramase works behind the scenes. So the packages are very similar to what we saw before. We use commander.js, we use controller for logging, we use exec a to call other CLIs and we use Inquirer, which gives us uh, the ability to ask questions to our CLI users. If we jump in, we can see it's using commander.js here. You can see we have a generate command and we have an add command. And you can see here all the different default options so that you can call the CLI in non-interactive mode. And this is actually a feature that I added to it. So how it works is when you run Kiramase in it or generate, um, it will go and ask you a whole bunch of questions. Do you want to add a model? Do you want to add a TRPC route and so on? And you can see all of this is done using checkbox, which is coming from Inquirer. So you can just select via checkbox in the CLI what you want to have generated. And then to generate the code, you'll see in this generators.ts file, for example, this is generating for next auth. You can see we're generating the uh, account model that is needed for next auth to work. You can see if we're using planet scale, we might have a different index set up and so on. Here you can see the session, the user, and basically your entire app is just going to be generated via simple strings that are built for you like this. Um, the power of this is there's a lot that is set up. Um, but if you want to understand how it works, it's basically just CLI via commander.js. And then we're going to create the strings of what we want to create. And then we're just going to write the files into the project. That's it. If we take a look at another generator here, you can see this is the code for Lucia. Here you can see we're adding um, some, front, some front end React code with Tailwind classes and so on. Here you can see the sign up page. 
And basically every package we add, there's just going to be more and more text that's added to the project. So overall, it's quite a simple project, but it's extremely powerful in what you can do. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Go give Fullstack AI and Kira Masse a try. I think it can help you become a lot more productive in your workflow, especially if you're starting a new project. Don't forget to subscribe, give the video a like, and if you're watching it, while the video comes out, I'm launching Inbox Zero on Product Hunt this week. So the link will be in the description below. I would love an upvote. I would love a star on GitHub for the project as well. There's also a link to the newsletter for Learn From Open Source in the description. Till next time.